right, it's so good to see each of you tonight. Thank you so much for coming and being part of our service on this Wednesday, rainy, foggy, crazy weather. Tra traffic is just beautiful, praise God. Uh, so glad. How many of you had to fight traffic to get here tonight? <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Isn't it good that uh, when you have that good traffic and you get here in Atlanta and you just know everything's going to be all right, praise the Lord. Uh, then the rain starts to descend. Then you know you got to start praying, brother. <laughs> brother Steve, you got to start praying a lot because you know that things are going to go wrong, go south very quickly around here. But we're thankful for this. We're going to go ahead. Let's all stand. Page number 162, or Living by Faith. We're going to have Brother Don come around and lead us in this good song. Page number 162, thankful for the faith that God gives to us. Let's sing this good song. Come on, Brother. I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting can And feel no alarm Though tempests may blow And the storm clouds arise Obscuring the darkness and blind I'm never alarmed At the overcast skies The master looks on at the strife Living by faith In Jesus above Trusting, confiding in his great love. From all harm sick, in his sheltering arms, will I be living by faith and feel no alarm. Let's sing it all tonight. I know that he safely will carry me through. No matter what evil's betide, why should I then care though the tempest may blow if Jesus walks close to my side? Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love from all. We'll return to this earth some sweet day. Our troubles will then all be over. The master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. Sing it now. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. standing for just a moment. But Brother Barrios, won't you come on up this way and you open us in a word of prayer. So thankful for Brother Barrios and how he works so hard over there in the Spanish ministry and uh, so thankful for God blessing and touching the way that he has. Brother Barrios, you come on ahead and you pray for us, Brother. God bless you. Brother. God bless you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful week. Thank you for our church, for our pastor, for the service that we have tonight, Lord Jesus. Speak to our hearts tonight. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's remain standing, if you will. Amen. I'm afraid if I let you sit down, you might not stand up again. Amen. 
just over in the glory land, page number 248. Sometimes as Christians, we get a bit discouraged. And I'll admit, this weather we've had the last day or so will discourage the best. Amen. But I've got a vision through faith, through Jesus Christ, that just over in the glory land, there's a better place that we're headed to. Amen. Can't wait till the Lord comes. Let's sing. I've a home prepared where the saints abide Just over in the glory land And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land I am on my way to those mansions fair just over in the glory land there to sing God's praise and His glory share just over in the glory land just over over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land just over over in the glory land there the happy angel man just over in the glory land let's sing it again what a joyful thought that my lord i'll see just over in the glory land and with kindred say there forever be just over in the glory land just over in the glory land the happy angel man just over in the glory land just over over in the glory land there the mighty host house stand just over in the glory land with the blood washed throng i will shout and sing just over in the glory land Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land there with the mighty host, I'll stand just over in the glory land. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You go ahead, be seated, and so thankful for that good singing. Y'all are singing so well, and so thankful for what God's going to do here in the service tonight. If you are a guest with us, thank you so much for coming, being a part, and we're going through all that weather that you had to go through. Uh, but we have been having wonderful services here at Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. So thankful that we have great time. Haven't you enjoyed the January Jubilee and how great that has been, boy, the first week with the Blythe family. Then we had Dr. Smith this past Sunday and then Sunday night, the inspirations all came to be with us. And uh, so thankful uh, that they were able, boy, they're trying to scroll through all that as fast as I'm talking. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stop, no, stop, yeah, 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 all right, that'll be good, right there. Stop right there, connect with us, that'll be great. But uh, I'm telling you, you can't t do that to people like me. I'm like a squirrel, you know, squirrel runs by, and I, I notice what's going on. But uh, so thankful for that. Sunday mornings, 10 o'clock or 1045, hey, Pastor, how are you doing? Praise God. Everybody wave at Pastor, he's in not seeing. 1045 over there in the Oasis area Make sure you go out men Go be a part of that prayer time Pray for our pastor Pray for the service Pray for everything that is going on And we're just excited about what happens here in our services And part of that is because The power of prayer is real 
And we are thankful that people are getting saved. People are coming along, joining the church. People are coming along to be a part of Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. I'm so thankful for that. Part of that is the prayers that you people are able to be praying. So come out and be a part of that. Then February the 1st, make sure you remember our Beams Bible Day. We're going to be receiving a special offering to help the Bible project that is down in Mexico uh, for the people there of Mexico. They have uh, $40,000 they're wanting to uh, be able to raise. And we want to be able to help in any way that we can. So come prepared February 1st. That's the first Sunday in February. Come prepared to give a special love offering to the Beams Bible. Uh, that, that's just a great organization down there in Mississippi. And then, of course, at January 24th, we have our Lasting Love is going to be coming up. That class that Brother Joe Kramer, Sister Stephanie Kramer has been doing a wonderful job. Uh, if you're a married couple that want to come and be a part and share some of your wisdom and impart some of that wisdom, uh, some of us younger folks would love to be able to, I thank God I get to include myself in younger folks, amen. Uh, we would love to be able to get some of that wisdom. But then some of us that would like to plan, if you'd like to plan to get married soon, uh, we want to make sure that you're prepared for what you're going to be going into, praise God. Uh, so come out and be a part of the lasting love. And it'll be a blessing to each and every one of you as well, I guarantee it. Then also, our Young at Heart going to be having Saturday, Saturday, February the 11th at 1 o'clock. They're going to be having a little get-together, so make sure that you sign up uh, by the 29th of January. Uh, make sure that you go ahead and see Sister Gail Watson about that, and I'm sure that it'll be uh, a great time for those people that go and part of that. Then, of course, we've been helping that all that out there in the foyer is to help the community for those that's been devastated by what's been going on the storms. Now, I got some calls this afternoon that some of the people in our church are still without power. And it's boy, just a and they said we've called the power company and we're asking them when is the power going to be on and they've just had the response now, we don't know. So uh, that's that's a terrible thing. So we just need to continue to pray and thank you for those that have uh, been able to donate and help to get some uh, generators down there to be able to help them get uh, some things going and we're so thankful for that but thank you for the donations as well and we're going to be taking those at the end of the week so if you would like to be able to help and bring something for that we would definitely appreciate your help and assistance in that way as well but we are honored here tonight before we go into a special and go into preaching time we do have brother Hamby with us tonight and we're so thankful for him he's going to come and present his work that God has in store for him you go ahead you give him a good Harvest Baptist Tabernacle welcome God bless you brother Amen. Amen. Well, it is a blessing to get to be back and see what God's doing here at Harvest Twice. About 20 years ago, uh, we were on furlough uh, and from Ivory Coast, West Africa, and got to come and present our work in the old building back years ago. And so now that's a lot of hair under the bridge, amen? <laughs> Except for Brother Roy. I think he's, got, he's making up for it for me. But I praise the Lord for the opportunity. Got to run into your preacher the other day, who I love dearly. Uh, he is near and dear to my heart. I've always prayed for him and appreciate him. And, and uh, when I was 16 years old, he preached a revival at our home church. I appreciate you letting us borrow him, amen, every once in a while. But he preached a revival at our home church about the Rosa Sharon, and God got a hold of my heart. And I dedicated my life to the Lord that night. I'd been saved. I got saved as a missionary kid at six years old in Africa, amen. And God got a hold of my heart that night, 16 years old, and said, what are you doing for me, amen. And I said, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do except preach. <laughs> and so I made that big mistake, and then the Lord called me to preach, amen, but, uh, and led us back into missions. My wife, Amanda, I asked her to stand up. This is my wife, my beautiful wife, Amanda, amen. I appreciate her, and we've been married uh, this past June. It's been 25 years. Uh, we've been married, and I praise the Lord for her. She's put up with me every, every ounce and every hair loss and everything. She's been there right there along beside me, picking up the hairs as I go, amen. I think she's saving them for me, but I praise the Lord for her. But we've been missionaries for the past 17 years in the country of Canada, and you guys have had a part of that. I don't know if you realize it, but you had a part of our ministry for the past 17 years, actually the past 20 years, and so we've been in, in, in Canada for the past 17 years planting churches there uh, and serving as uh, 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 church planters and church rescue there in Canada. We are in the province of Quebec, and so tonight I, I've got a video, it's about six minutes long, and I'm going to show that, and I'm going to shut up in just a second and sit down, and after the video's done, I'm going to turn it back over to you. But I want to tell you thank you for what you've done and the parts you've had in our ministry. The Bible said it's fruit that will abound to your account. Amen. That's, a, that's fruit that will abound to your account. You've had a part in it. And in heaven there's people that are born again because you uh, uh, gave sacrificially. What we're doing now, God has led us to 
come back to the office. We've, we've been asked by Dr. Scott Cottle and, and the missionary at Macedonia World Baptist Missions to come back to the States. We turned our work over. God worked all that out, just put the right people in place, turned our works over there in Quebec to a national pastor there, and we appreciate the ministry he's doing, Brother Burns, at Faith Baptist Church in Quebec. But they asked us to come back and take over the role of Far North Director at the home office. So I'm there, but also training to become assistant director when my dad, uh, Dean Hamby, will step back from that role in the next couple of years. I told him I'm just going to stick formaldehyde in him and duct tape him to his chair because I don't want him to go anywhere. It's about to kill me. Hey, Amen. It's just, a, it's just a, it's so much that, that goes on there. But we'll be taking over that role in the next few years as assistant director. So we ask you to pray for us. Pray for my wife because that means a whole lot more miles on the road. She's been used to being a pastor's wife. Amen. She's been, you know, a pastor's wife and a homemaker there in Canada, and this is a whole different role for her now. And we're going, we're a lot of miles on the road, and we don't like Atlanta traffic. Amen. Our town of our town of Three Rivers. Now we had snow to deal with, and I, I don't know what all this belly aching is about 60 and 70 degrees in January. We're loving it. <laughs> this is this is wonderful. You know, we're in short. I was in short sleeves all this week. It's been wonderful. But we usually have, you know, a good average of four and five feet of snow every winter. One year we had 11 feet of snow on the ground. And that was the normal winter. It starts first of uh, end of November usually and goes through April. And we have snow on the ground, and it can average about minus 30, uh, 35 through January, February. So we're loving this weather. So so if y'all want some real weather, come come north with us. Amen. <laughs> in the meantime, we do ask you to stop by the table in the back. We have our prayer cards, and I tell people take them to, to the two most visited places in your house: your bathroom mirror and your refrigerator door. This is our first prayer card we've done in 25 years. It's just been me and her on it. That was tough. So our three boys are now grown. Our oldest is now married. Our second's getting married in April. And our third's wanting to get married some point, sometime. Amen. If, if, if a girl having. So we praise the Lord for him. But uh, three boys, we thank the Lord for them. They're all uh, have surrendered to the ministry and serving the Lord there in our church at Old Swanee Baptist Church in Beaufort, Georgia. Praise the Lord for that. Have another uh, uh, something that you could give. I think Brother Allen. We have for the youth, 15 years old to 25 years old, we have a, a Reaching the World Youth conference, conference coming up April 22nd. We want to invite your church to be a part of that. All the information is on the back of it. If you want to send your young people up, uh, it's $25, I believe, for the day. That includes a meal, a conference gift, notebook, more that we give to the young people as they come. And it's, it's uh, just revolved around missions. We have missionaries coming in from different places and just to teach and preach. And we, we separate them out between groups and have a good time with the young people that day. We had a young lady saved last year at that conference, and I praise the Lord for that. So enlisted, that's the name. I have one little kid ask me, I don't want to go to that. I said, why not? He said, I don't want to go in the army. <laughs> I, said, I said, oh, whoa, I got it, enlisted. So it's not about the army, so that it's about the enlisted in the Lord's service, amen. And we have a magazine, our Focus on the Field magazine. We'd love to have you pick one up and different articles in there about missionaries. It's not just, it's not just a bunch of prayer letters. In fact, my, my article in there is about geese, if you like Canadian geese, amen. But uh, we'd love you to pick up that magazine and enjoy it and, and pray for missionaries, amen. Pray for our family, Amanda and Jason Hamby as we continue to serve the Lord. So if I let them run the, run the video, amen.
are so thankful that we are able to have a part just in those type of ministries where we're not able to be able to be there ourselves, but we are clipping coupons off of what God has been doing for, you said, 17 years now that our church has been a part. Praise God. That is absolutely wonderful and so thankful. We'll be praying for you, Brother Hamby. And, of course, you go by their table. You get their prayer cards. You get all that information. Make sure you continue to help them, support them through their ministry. And as they're transferring into a new portion of ministry, you continue to pray for them. We'll be praying for you, Brother Jason, as well. We do have a special for us this evening, a couple of fine young men. Well, at least one of them is young. But uh, but we're, that's a joke, guys. Y'all can laugh at that. It'll be all right. Uh, but we're so thankful to have them over here with us. And uh, you pray for them. They're going to take us into preaching time. They're going to sing for us. You make them welcome this evening. More about Jesus would I know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Tell me more, more about Jesus. And more, more about Jesus, more of his saving fullness, see, more of his love who died for me, and more about Jesus. Jesus, let me learn more of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, my teacher, be showing the things of Christ to me. Tell me more, more about Jesus, and more, more about Jesus, and more of his saving fullness, and more of his love who on his throne riches and glory all his own more of his kingdom sure increase and more of his coming prince of peace tell such a blessing uh, to be able to hear young people singing about the Lord and, and boy even better a 
mother, a father and a son singing together about the Lord. There's nothing greater than to be able to sing with your kids, to be able to minister with your children. And uh, my dad says it's great to be able to minister with your grandkids. I don't know that yet, and uh, I don't want to know anytime soon. But, uh, but I'm looking forward to the day to be able to see uh, what God just continue to touch as well, just uh, touch the family that we have to be able to do that. Joshua chapter number 2 this evening, and uh, I know uh, what time it is, and I know how fast we need to go to be able to get through uh, in time. It don't worry. It'll be all right. Amen? And uh, we're, we're just here to serve God anyway, right? Joshua chapter number 2, verse number 6. It's where I want to begin reading in our text, but uh, really, truly before that, I'll, I'll just be honest with you, I've been having a good time on these rooftops. Uh, last week, we were able to see a rooftop that uh, Peter had to get changed, rearranged, some issues, some problems, some trials, tribulations that uh, Paul or, or, or Peter would have gone through, but yet he, God had to rearrange his mindset. And how many of you ever had to have God just rearrange your mindset? Boy, I've had, to, had to God, God just get a hold of me and say, listen, you may have felt this way, you may have thought this way, you have always gone along with this way, but that's not the way it's going to be. This is the way it's going to be. I'm going to change your mind. But then the week before that, we got with those four friends that had to break down the barriers to make sure that uh, nobody was going to be between them, their friend, and Jesus Christ. And how we saw those four people, those four men were there to, to be able to help their friend, to be able to get them to Jesus Christ, and just to have to break through some things and get up on the rooftop to be able to do that. And then here tonight, we're going to get to another rooftop. We found uh, Peter in that encounter. We found that four guys in the counter were there. And now uh, we're going to see, uh, and, and I'll be honest with you, when Peter was up there talking with God, it was kind of comical, his response. Jesus or God lets down that sheet and he says, oh, not me, Lord. Not me. I, I, I would never. Yeah. Some of y'all are looking at me like, yeah, I wouldn't either, praise God. Well, we say that, but the God is telling him, hey, listen, what I have clean, cleansed, call that un uncommon. Don't call that uncommon. I have done something uh, completely changing. And it, we see all that. And then in our text tonight, in Joshua chapter number 2, I want you to look in verse number 6 with me. Joshua chapter number 2, verse number 6. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan, talking about the men that were chasing after those spies that she had hid, unto the fords, and, and as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out they shut the gate and before they were laid down she came unto them upon the roof and she said unto the men I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that the terror that your terror is fallen upon us and that all in the inhabitants of the land faint because of you for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you and ye and when ye came out of the Egypt and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God, in heaven above and in earth beneath. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this time. God, I thank you for what you've given to us tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just use us, Lord, for your honor, for your glory. Lord, I pray that you would just help us, Lord, to be able to open and expound the word of God the way that you would have us to expound it to these uh, people, those that are watching by way of the internet, those that are here in the sanctuary tonight with us. God, I pray that you just bless. God, I pray that you'd use, God, your word. God, we thank you that you promised that it would never return void. God, that it would always be uh, used to be, to lift, uplifting your holy name. God, I pray you just touch me tonight, God. Touch these people tonight. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. So when we look in our text tonight, Joshua chapter number 2, Moses had already spent 40 years ago, had sent these spies over into the land, but they didn't come back. They came back discouraged. They came back uh, dismayed. They came back as in a defeat and said, there's no way that we'll be able to do this. But there were two men that came back and said, hey, we've got this. Why? Not because we can do anything, 
but the God we serve can do this. And that will make all the difference in the world when you take the focus off of yourself and try to say, I can do this. When you got rid of that and say, the God that I serve, He will be able to do this, then that's going to make all the difference in the world. And we make sure that we, we continue to do that. And then those two men came back with readiness and they came back with confidence in the Lord and, and one which uh, was now at the helm of leading the people of, of God and going into conquering this land. And that man is by the name of Joshua, by whom the, the book is, is titled by. And, and then they see that, uh, that God is working a miracle in, the favor, in their favor for each of them. And see, it is here that these spies found that they were, they were going to be captured. They were already found out. They were going to be captured except for they had an unforeseen assistant. To be honest with you, this lady by the name of Rahab was probably not one that you really wanted to be associated with. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and hit this as kind of a Bible study style real quickly as by way of introduction. But we can simply say this, the contemplation over uh, the lifestyle of Rahab cannot really be contemplated all that much because yes it's true in the very first verse it has a very unbecoming description of her in the very first verse in Joshua chapter number 2 look at verse number 1 with me near the, near the end of the verse it says and they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there now granted I'm going to go ahead and tell you and now I know you Bible scholars you Bible students are going to say but but Brother Shane, you've got to think about this. The word for harlot in Hebrew can also mean a keeper of an inn, and that's very true. We begin to look at that. And if, and if we had just the Old Testament, we had just this uh, text here in Joshua chapter 2, verse number 1, if we only had that verse, then maybe we would be able to give a little leeway and say, then, then maybe she is just a keeper of an inn. Maybe she is one that's just taking care of, of uh, those that are traveling and passing by. But we don't have just the Old Testament. We also have the New Testament. And if you will, and if you want to just go ahead and save your space there and turn over to with me to James chapter number 2. James chapter number 2 has a very real description of her as well. She also, believe it or not, and I love this fact, Brother Ricky, do you believe that Rahab is in Hebrews chapter number 11, the hall of fame of faith, in which Joshua didn't even make? But Rahab is here. But in James chapter number 2, verse number 25, it says this, Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works. Rahab the harlot, very, very plainly there, the word that is used in James under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God gives us a plain understanding that she was a lady of ill repute. That this was a lady that uh, there's nobody that I want. I don't want anybody like that in my family. I don't want anybody like that to be uh, taken care of and, and be a part of anything that's going on in mine. And I'll be honest with you. It's probably very shocking that many people would give others this beautiful uh, 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 shocking that say that God would use somebody like Rahab, a lady that uh, was doing things that, like that. Well, she wasn't practicing that anymore, I guarantee, because when God got a hold of her, it changed her life. When God gets a hold of your life, it'll change everything about you. And when we begin to see that, we get to see when we're looking there, it's very shocking that many of us say, well, God would use somebody like that. But then other people that says, well, thank God that God will somebody use somebody like that. Because if God will use somebody like that, God could use somebody like me. As a matter of fact, a lot of people say, oh, well, I have been saved at a young age, and praise God, I'm glad I was saved at a very young age, and I probably wasn't able to get out and do a whole lot of crazy things, but there are some people that have gotten out into the world, and they've gotten into a lot of things that, that God would have never allowed them to get into, but they did, and there's nothing that they can do about that in the past. But I can tell you that Jesus Christ forgives and Jesus Christ can give them a new start and a new life and thank God that that is possible only through the blood of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, it comes to me, it comes to mine. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 11, it says, And such were some of you. There was a lot of such were some of you. And I'll be honest with you, there's a whole lot of them, Brother James, sitting in churches today. And why? Thank God that it was and such were. Not anymore. Why not? Because God has got a hold of their life. 
because the blood of Christ has been poured out upon their life, because forgiveness has been given to them, because the righteousness of God has been covering them and covers them now. And thank God that we have that. But Rahab took these spies to the roof to hide them in that flax, those, those bundles of that, that had been taken to the roof to dry out, to be ready to go ahead and make a little further and, and do a little bit more in the, in the next process of harvesting. And, and it's there that we see God get a hold of her life. He, she has to admit some things as she's sitting on the roof with those guys. As she's sitting up there, she has to make a change and, and see a change in her life. And God got a hold of her life and makes a change and moves her from her situation, from her status, from her station, from, praise God, the eternity that she had, that she had going forward. God has removed her from all of those things because of what God did on that rooftop with her. You say, what is it? Well, quickly, number one, I, I, and, and by way of introduction, we say, what is this going to happen? Well, there's a witness that we see that's there. Boy, we see that God had already, if you look in verse number 10 with me, verse number 10 and simply sees that we see that God had already been working in the life of this lady. Aren't you glad that when you go out soul winning, that you're not the only one, praise God, that has been preparing to go do that? Thank you, Brother Hamby. Praise God. There are, there's somebody else that has already been working before you ever knock on the first door, door you knock on. Before you ever give the first track to somebody. Before you ever do anything to help somebody else come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. There is one that has already been knocking on their door. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that is the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God is the one that goes before us and opens the doors and opens the heart that we might be able to witness to them. But there's already been something going on and she had uh, seen what God had done for the people of Israel already, how he had dried up the Red Sea. And, and she also gave credit to God. This is amazing for the victory over the Amorites. She didn't say, boy, y'all really obliterated them. She said, I know and I see that your God has given you the victory over these. Your God is the one that opened these waters for you to be able to cross over on dry ground. And I know that your God can do something great. Now, I'll be honest with you. This young lady's been raised in a time where she's been in a place where there's been a bunch of idolatry all around her. There she knows nothing but idolatry. She doesn't know anything about the thing of God, but she knows that... <laughs> Brother Steve, she knows that there's something different about the God that is bringing those people of Israel through. And she wants to get a hold of that God. I'll be honest with you, when you get a hold of God Almighty, the one that can make a difference, you see the witness that changes, and she had witnessed God doing great things for these people. But also, number two, we see a warning that was given to her in verse number 18. I won't take the time to read the verse, but you can read that verse to yourself. But those spies told the stipulations to her safety, to her salvation. She gave, they gave her what you need to do to be able to do that. Bind that scarlet cord in the window because destruction is coming. I'm going to be honest with you, people. The people of God, we need to be able to stand up and tell the world that destruction is coming. There's no stopping it. God has already said that it's going to happen. The only way that you can be saved from destruction, there's no stopping that, but the only way that it's going to take not take place, but is if you do this, then you and your family will be safe. Boy, a stern warning needs to be given to the world today. God is coming again. Judgment is coming again. And that judgment is not going to be stayed in any way. The hand of God in judgment will come sternly upon the face of this earth. Thank God I don't have to deal with that. Thank God I don't have to be here. Why? Because I've already made preparations. Boy, but that warning is so real. But then, number three, we see a waiting. See, a lot of times we just think, boy, they, they came in, those spies went through and and, and, and uh, the, uh, uh, Rahab the harlot she was able to make this deal and, and say hey I'll do this for you if you take care of my family and do that and, and we see that the but chapter number 2 ends with the spies returning to Joshua and saying hey the land is ours the, the hearts of the people are melting there's, there's no way that they can uh, uh, defeat us because they are, they are as good as done God has already delivered these people into our hands but Rahab has to wait as a matter of fact, she knew that they would soon return. But in the time that she had, she needed to do some things. 
See, she had to live not only, it's not until chapter number 6 that we see that the people of Israel start coming and surrounding the, the walls of Jericho, but she's just in chapter number 2. She has to live through chapter 3, 4, and 5. We're doing math now, it's real simple. 3, 4, and 5 come between 2 and 6. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise God. At least we got some elementary math going, right? So uh, she had to live through those chapters. What's going on in those chapters? Well, the people of Israel are doing things, and we, we kind of forget about Rahab. Bless her heart, we just kind of forget that she's over there. She's just waiting for a season, but everybody else is doing something. What? What is it? That they're crossing Israel. Chapter number 3 is crossing over the Jordan, and they're crossing over on dry ground, and they're, they're being uh, led by the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant. It's amazing that you see that. Chapter number 4, we're going through, and we're seeing them setting up stones for remembrance and saying, hey, I want you to remember this. I want you to know what going on that God has worked a miracle and set it up for these people later on down the road in, verse, in chapter number 5 we see that uh, uh, Joshua is trying to work and trying to do all he can do and he has a meeting with that divine captain <laughs> and he says now, are you for us or are you against us because if you're against us we're done but those spies had already told him spies had already said the people's hearts melt Boy, the thank God that that divine captain gives the encouragement and says, I'm going to be with you, Joshua. Don't you worry. But Rahab was having to wait during that time. What was she doing during that time? I believe with all my heart, Dad, this is what she was doing. I, Dad, I want you to come into my house because there's something bad that's going to happen. And I want you to be in my house. And as long as you're in my house, it'll be okay. Mom, I need you to get in. I need you to stay in my house because if you stay in my house. But honey, I, I've got things I need to do. I've got things that I need to do. I need to go here and there and take care of business. No, Mom, you come and be sisters, brothers, everybody that she could, all of her family. She was, while she was just waiting, she was working. And folks, we're waiting for a season right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're waiting for a season because Jesus Christ has already told us, Brother Ricky, I'm coming again. I'm coming back. <laughs> Brother Lonnie, I'm coming for you. But in the meantime, we just sit there and think, boy, is there just for us to just go ahead and sit around and twiddle our thumbs and say, boy, look what a great thing that God has given me a great salvation and I don't have to worry about going to hell because God has already saved me. And, and, and a lot of the attitude, Brother Jose, is, well, I got my four and no more. I ain't worried about them, my family, my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brothers, my, my family, my wife, and my kids. They're all saved. Don't worry about anything else. No, we've got work to do, folks. We've got work to do. We can't just sit around and wait. We've got to work uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ during this waiting time. But then there's finally, and when we get to chapter number 6, there's a welcome. <laughs> there's a welcome to be able to go through that surrounding uh, defeat of Jer uh, Chapter number 6 sees that defeat of Jericho, and there's that one place that stood still, uh, that kept standing up, not because of some mistake and not because somebody took a miscalculation or not because God said, oops, what happened to that part of the wall? It was because God had already made, glory, made the deal with, with Rahab because she by faith believed that God could save her and her family. Boy, it's time for us just to be able to remember God by faith can save our family. God can change our whole life. God can change everything that's happening. Now, i got to hurry because I don't have but a few more minutes left over before we got to get out of here a little after 8, 9 o'clock, something like that, right? Amen? Amen. Brother Rick, I love you. Praise God. Somebody give that man a microphone. Hallelujah. Boy, we find that welcome, but I see a few things. How is it that, how is it that she could sit on that rooftop and sit in that house and, and look at the defeat and the destruction of all of her, the people that she had known all of her life? How could she look at the destruction that was happening because the people of Israel were coming in and surrounding by and going through? And how could she stand because she got on a rooftop and, and did business with God? Because she saw some real business take place. Well, I want you to look at verse number 1. Look at her confession. Look at verse number 9. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, that all of the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Now, I've already said it before. She was raised in a place of idolatry, and Rahab had witnessed the vile and the unrighteous living and the lives of those that surrounded her, but she could see that there was something different about the God that the people of Israel served. Thank God. 
God, Brother James, I know that there's something different about the God that I serve. Oh, somebody help me, please, tonight. Because we, we, we just have a good time just worshiping God tonight because there's something different about the Lord that we serve. There's something different about the God that we serve. Boy, the God that, that other people serve, they, they may serve those gods of wood and stone and, and there's nothing to them. They, they have eyes that cannot see and they have ears that cannot hear. They have mouths that cannot talk. They have hands that cannot touch and feet that cannot walk. But I serve a God, praise God, that has the hands that can help me and the feet to walk beside me and the, ha- and the, and the, and the mouth to be able able to sweet uh, whisper into me that everything's going to be all right and he has the eyes to be able to look upon me and know where I am in every situation of my life and he has praise God the ears to be able to hear me when I'll be able to whisper in a prayer and I don't even have to whisper it praise God I can just say it with deep down within my heart and God can hear how I do that the confession of God uh, of, of Rahab is there that there's something different about that God and I want that God what is that God? The God that she says, she makes a proclamation. It's really good. It's very simple in verse number nine. Two words. I know. How, how many of us really truly can say, I know some things? I know how to do this. I know how to do that. I know this person. I know that person. I know what's going on here. I know what. But Rahab said, listen. I know that your Lord, that your God is making the difference. See, this is the difference between what you place your faith in. Some uh, place their faith in something that can't even help them and can't even save them. But she witnessed the evidence of God that could do great things and by faith believed that he could save her and her family. She got on that rooftop and she said, I know that your God can do something. I know that, that, boy, I've tried to serve these other gods. I've I've begged them to get me out of the situation that I've in. I've begged them to be able to help my family. But I know without a shadow of a doubt that if I call on your God, God. And thank God it's the same God that I serve. And if I call on my God, that that can make a difference in everybody's life. The confession that she had, she knew that I had proclamation, I know, but she also knew that he was a personal God. How is it a personal God? Joshua chapter number 2, verse number 11, the Bible says, And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did they remain in any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord, look at that next word, and underlined it, Go ahead and circle it, box it, highlight it, whatever you want to do. But the Lord, your God, that is a personal pronoun. Thank God that I serve a God that is not a God that is up there high and lofted up and doesn't care for me, doesn't see me, doesn't know anything about me. But I serve a God that loves me, cares for me, walks along beside of me, tells me good morning every morning, tells me good night every night, be able to walk along and travel down the road and begin to pray. When I'm in the middle of that Atlanta traffic, I can talk to him and he knows my name. He knows the hairs or the lack thereof on our heads, praise God. We know God that knows every one of us and I'm so thankful that we have a personal God that we can serve day by day. Boy, that is her, her confession. Number two, number two. <laughs> I've really got to hurry. Number two, it's her concern. Look at her concern. Look with me in Joshua chapter number two, verse number 12. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the word, since I have showed you kindness, that you also show kindness, look at this, unto my father's house. And give me a true token. What is her concern? What is your concern? To be honest with you, we live in a world that is so self-absorbed. We live in a world where there's a, a term, selfies. Can I take just a moment? This is going to sound really mean, but I don't care about some of the things people post. I don't need to know. You don't need to tell everybody. I'm saying it with a smile on my face. Does that make it better? 
think that there's these things that people just selfies. I, I actually found out that there was actually they did some research and they said that they gave people a, a, a selfie and they gave a filter on their phone and they did all these things and it took them no less than about 86 pictures before they actually posted the picture that they wanted. It took them that many times to get the picture right. Boy, it's a good thing they don't have Polaroids like I did back in the day. How many of you remember the day when you had to come, you had to go and get your pictures developed at the, the Kodak store, and you came and you said, oh, let's all sit down at the family table, and let's see what the pictures look like. And then, oh, my eyes were closed in that one. Oh, what were you doing there? Yeah. But yet we live in a world now that's all self-absorbed and they want to take so many pictures and make it look. And I, I understand you want to look good. You want to make everybody the best. And I had to tell my little girl the other day, you understand that the, the world that you see on Facebook, Instagram, and all those things are not really people's lives. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not preaching against it, don't get me wrong, but they always share the best of what they got. Just like we do. But praise God, here we are, that her concern was not about herself. But she said, my, my father's family, my father's household. God has already set this in motion, and, and this land is yours. The future says that it's yours, but I want to be a part of it. I have not anything unless God gives grace to be able to help me. And my father's house, my family, look at verse number 13, and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. Their concern, her concern was that, don't you remember the day you got saved? Don't you remember the day you got saved? Didn't you want to go down your contact list and tell everybody you could about the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, back in the 1900s, I didn't have a contact list. It always sounds so much better or worse when you say it that way, but I didn't know, I didn't have that, but I wanted to tell everybody about Jesus. I want to tell them about how great it was, and, and you remember that. Don't you want to tell everybody what a great part it was? But listen to this. Look at her confidence in verse, uh, in verse number 21, her confidence, and we're coming down to the end. I promise you, I told you we're going to get out quick. Her confidence, number three. And she said, Joshua chapter number two, verse number 21, according unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away and departed, and they departed, and she bound the scarlet line in the window. See, earlier we spoke about that waiting that Rahab had to endure. But was it, what was it that allowed her to continue? What was it that allowed her to keep on going? The word of those spies, they said, hey, we're going to take care of you. And we promise that God will take care of you. This is what you have to do. Boy, she had the word. She had the word of those spies to be able to say, aren't you glad we have a better word? We've got a precious word. We have a wonderful word that, that tells us everything's going to be all right. Brother Richard, when I go through and I begin to look at how terrible things are going to get and how crazy things are going to get, and I begin to see the book of Revelation, and I begin to see how God is going to be pouring out judgment upon judgment upon judgment. And he says, oh, by the way, I've already told you, you're not going to be there for that, so don't worry about that part. And, and, and you just tell others about that, that what is to come. You need to tell others that you need to make sure that others know that there's something. But have confidence in the word that I have given to you have confidence and you just go to those words boy those times that I could say in in Psalm 56 3 it says it in time that I'm afraid I will trust in thee thank God that I could trust in God and in those times when I have confidence I just go back to the word of God and say God help me through this situation and he gives me another verse from his word thank God for the word of God but then also her confidence also is not only only in the word but it's in the promise that he she was given the promise is this. Look at verse number 12. Back up with me in Joshua chapter number 2, verse number 12. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house. And look at that last phrase. And give me a true token. Give me a true token. Child of God, the word is enough. But God has given us more. 
God has given us so much more. God also, by the way, you begin to look at that, they begin to say, uh, uh, go in verse number 18, take down and go ahead and let down this uh, uh, scarlet uh, 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 rope and let it down and let it hang there in your window and, and make sure. And I'm sure, I'll be honest with you, there were times when, when, when Rahab would go ahead and, and begin to think, boy, I, it's been a few days or it's been a little while and I'm wondering if they're going to come right now and she might go over to the window and she might look out and say, well, I don't see anybody on the horizon. I don't, I don't see him coming over right now, but, but she'd look down glory to God she looked down and she'd see that little rope that was scarlet thank God for that scarlet rope and we compare it now to the the scarlet rope to the red blood of Jesus Christ and and boy there's times brother Hamby where I'm I'm looking out on the horizon I'm saying God there's you've got to be coming soon there's got to be a time that, that that's about to take place you you have to make sure that you come today but then I look down and and thank God I see the blood of Christ I see that, hey, there's a token for me. There's something that I can have confidence in, that the blood will never, ever lose its power, that the devil can never cross over the line that where Jesus Christ has put his blood. Thank God that my salvation is not on my works because I can't do enough. Thank God that my salvation is not on my church membership because I can't get into enough churches. Thank God that my church membership and, and boy, my baptism is not part of my salvation. But I can tell you, thank God that the blood of Jesus Christ and his righteousness is all that I need. I can have confidence in that very thing, the blood of Jesus Christ. Boy, her confidence, but then lastly, real quickly, her commitment. Verse number 21. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. Her commitment was this. <laughs> My identity has changed. I grew up with you. I've worked here. But I no longer identify with the people of this world. now identify with a whole nother group of people thank God when I got saved I don't have to identify with this whole world brother Wade I don't have to identify with this whole world anymore thank God I can identify with another group of people I can identify with one that is greater than all Boy, she kept the instructions that she made sure that she continued and she gave her commitment. You say, Brother Shane, how is it that you get so excited and, and how is it that a, a rooftop renovation that took place in Rahab, how would that make such a, a completely a world changing? Well, it made a change for her family. As a matter of fact, it made a change for all of us. As, as a matter of fact, and, uh, this was all decided. We begin to look at this, this commitment and this uh, uh, time that she had her confidence and the time that she made that confession that, that was all made on this little rooftop and God changed the direction of her life and her family tree. See, she's no longer rem to, to be remembered as a prostitute from Jericho. She has some pretty important people in her family tree. As a matter of fact, if you turn with me, go ahead to Ruth, Ruth chapter number 4. Ruth chapter number 4 says it this way, in, in verse number 17, it says, And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is born unto a, a son, born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. And he is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Phares. Phares begot Hezron, uh, and Hezron begot Ram, and Ram begot Abinadab, Abinadab begot Nashom, and Nashom begot Salmon, and Salmon begot Boaz, and Boaz begot Obed, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. Well, what is that so important for? Well, if you go a little further in Matthew chapter number 1, verse number 5, it says, And Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab, Rechab. What? How in the world do we take a lady of ill repute that's not even from the people of Israel? I call that grace. I call that mercy. I call that praise God that anybody and everybody, God lets them into the family if they trust his son. You say, well, what, what's going on? What, what, what's so great about this? Well, go on a little further. Matthew chapter number 1, verse number 16 says this. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus. This lady, 
that made a commitment on the rooftop got brought into the family of God literally into the family of God so how important is it for us to look at these rooftops boy I think it's pretty important to be able to see how she made these decisions real quickly on the fly because she had seen God doing something boy tonight I'll be honest with you I've seen God do a lot of things maybe I just need to kneel down beside somewhere beside a pew or on this altar and just say God just go ahead and rearrange change my direction God there's some folks in my family that need salvation and God you can do it if you can do it through her certainly you can do it through me we can go ahead and give it all over to God and have a change of direction in all of our lives ain't God good let's pray Heavenly Father Lord we thank you for this night we thank you for your many blessings that you've given to us God we thank you for this account that we see boy where you encountered Rahab and Rahab encountered you and you showed yourself to her and she accepted you by faith and now her, her name is known for so much greater things. God, in that lineage, your son. God, I beg you, God, that we would see, God, that if God can use her, God could use just about anybody. God, that you could just use anybody that's willing to be used of you. Lord, may you just go ahead and rearrange and change the direction of our life. Lord, if you see fit, change it in whatever way. Lord, we love you, we praise you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.